Wi-Fi Sheep would like to say a huge thank you to all of you that kindly support us. Help us continue to bring new videos like this. Join patreon.com forward slash Wi-Fi Sheep from just $1 a month. Hi everyone and welcome back to youtube.com forward slash Wi-Fi Sheep with me, Tom. Now, cast your minds back a month or so and we took a look at building a C64 or an emulated Commodore 64 that apparently ran on an Arduino Nano. That's one of those tiny 8-bit microcontrollers that have around 2K of RAM. I said at the time I didn't think this was possible and even if it was, it was going to be extremely limited. We knew that from the start. Anyway, in that video I built the circuit according to the diagrams of the online schematics and instructions and we tried to make it work and it didn't. Well, it sort of did, but didn't quite work as was expected. So I had to leave it there as I didn't have all the correct parts. But today, in this video, we're back. We're going to try again. However, I do have to make a little bit of a um, confession. So somebody involved in the last video, not naming names, but um, somebody uh, didn't quite put one part in the right place. And this was only picked up during the edit. So that is probably one of the things we're going to have to look at straight away and would explain the really ropey picture we got out of the system last time. That said, I'm still not convinced this is going to work properly, but, you know, let's give it a go. Let's see if we can make any progress today, especially now as I do have all the correct parts. But first, the PCBGoGo.com free PCB event is ongoing right now. It's now free for a one to two layer FR4 PCB measuring no more than 100 by 100 millimeters. PCB GoGo -Go is a quick turnaround PCB prototype manufacturer from China with over 10 years experience. They offer FR4 boards, Rogers, Copper, Flex and Rigid Flex for PCB prototype and assembly services. Click the first link in the description to this video and upload your Gerber files. Take advantage of this amazing and free offer today from PCBGoGo.com. Terms and conditions apply. So this is pretty much how we left it last time. And as I said in the intro, I noticed a slight mistake I made here with the 820 ohm. Uh, resistor. So if I just zoom in for you, right, it should be in the TX slot. So it should go from here to TX. And you can see it isn't. It's actually in the one. It's an empty screw hole. So uh, let's just see. First of all, let's just put some power in, power up the board. You see that's now powered up. And let's just make a tiny adjustment and see if that's any better. Ah, there we go. Something comes alive. It's an extremely wobbly picture. Uh, this could be due to the fact of not having the correct uh, diode in. So, so I now have here, this is the correct uh, diode. It looks almost identical to the one I put in, but it's not. So let's take out what we put in. And let's swap it for... Correct diode goes D3. There we go. And no, that's the correct diode, but now you can see the picture is really kind of faint and still really wobbly. Um, let's just try putting a keyboard in. And no, that's really, really not happy. So I was back on the correct.arduino.cc uh, page where this project was listed and clearly in the photographs you can see there's additional components that are not mentioned or included in any of the diagrams or parts lists. I clicked for a link to which talked about the keyboard interface that was used and even the keyboard interface diagram is missing bits but you can clearly see it shows some additional resistors bridging the data and clock lines of the keyboard through to the 5 volts rail of the power and for that it was using two 
10k uh, resistors and I actually have some 10k so I didn't have these in stock last time so let's just try if we can very carefully because I can't see what I'm doing now uh, bridging and that's two yeah that looks fine and we try putting the keyboard back in now stable with the keyboard in but I'm not getting any I'm not getting anything on on the keyboard so let me just make sure I've got the pins the correct way around we'll turn these pins round pop these back in and we'll try plugging back in again okay let's try that again keyboard is in ah We're working. That's the first time this has actually ever worked. Oh, the keys are all in the wrong place, but. I just wonder if I, I'm not happy with it. The video is so ropey though. I just wonder, can we if I take that? Dive back out. If we put me other one back in. Okay, there we are. Is the keyboard still functioning? Yes, it is. Just, but it's not. It's not happy. And it's not the sort of stable image that um, it was meant to be. I've had a lot mess around with it. I put the other diode back in. That is sort of the best I can get it. And I'll just zoom in actually so you can hopefully see the wobble. It's not a stable image by any stretch of the imagination. Um, it's okay. It is actually working. So yes, you can run a C64 kernel on a nano and it does work but it's really flaky i mean it's just so bad also i've noticed uh, i put a different type of keyboard in so it's still a usb with psd protocol and the thing just i mean the typing now works but the thing just goes you can see it going mad take the usb out it's fine I appreciate you can't see it on camera. I'm just going to put the other keyboard back in. This is the new one I have only just tried for today. And I mean, it's stable. Rat jittering is um, expected. It's because there isn't enough memory to do the keyboard and do the graphics. So every time you type or set a program to run or do something, it jitters. But you see how it's just so unstable. So, I mean, yes, it works, but I, it's really bad. A lot worse than what was demonstrated in that uh, Arduino community post. And also needing parts that just aren't on the schematic, which is annoying. So, I think we, we need something a little bit better than this. In all honesty. Right, so I guess I'm going to have to try and summarise this video now, and I don't even know where to begin. So we started the day with a previous build of a Arduino Nano running a version of a C64 kernel, heavily compressed, that barely showed up on the screen and barely worked. I admitted that I made a tiny mistake in the build last time, which did improve the video signal, but we were getting no kind of keyboard entry or input at all, and the pitch was all over the place. I changed out the uh, rectifier diode to the correct one. It made the screen go very pale indeed. After messing around and adding two more 10K resistors to the five volt grounding lines for the data pins for the keyboard, it suddenly worked. And well, I say worked, it barely worked. And the picture was all over the shop. You saw it, it was black and white, it was barely usable. It wasn't really worth us carrying on with. 
Right, well, that's it from me for now. If you haven't done already, please do consider liking and subscribing to the channel. You can also follow me on Twitter. It's at Wi-Fi Sheep. That's at Wi-Fi Sheep on Twitter. If you're feeling particularly generous, and many of you are, you can support me from $1 US on Patreon. You can go to patreon.com forward slash Wi-Fi Sheep. I'll be back real soon with more content right here on Wi-Fi Sheep. Until then, thank you so much for your company, and I'll see you real soon. Until next time, bye for now.